plus, like I told you in fiscal class, we've been able to look at the gastral states, kinetic molecular theory, understanding molecular speeds. And I told you that the other two chapters, ion transport and motion of ions, we'll try and do a video class. So we can move forward. So this video and the subsequent ones that I will send to the platform, please take time to go through the videos, jot anything you don't understand or questions, so you can post to the class forum for us to discuss, or you can, you know, send privately or come physically. But we want to do these two chapters or two models to help us move forward. So you're going to get a young transport that is chapter four of your book, which will call module four here. Yeah? So now we have module four point one, introduction to ion transport. And then our subsequent models will also follow. Now here we are. We're going to look at introduction, resistance, conductance, conductivity, strong and weak electrolytes, and we conclude. Like I said, is introduction to ion transport. Introduction. The motion of ion in solution, for us to look at this motion of ion in solution, we first set the scene by considering a single type of motion of ions in the presence of an electric field. Now, when we say that, we mean when you have an ion and electric field is applied, what happens to that ion? Of course, the ion will move as a result of the force of that electric field towards an opposite pole. And of course, that pole is what we call electron. This could simply be seen as a steady drift of ions through the solvent towards one electrode or the other. Depending on the ion in solution, positive and negative ions, that is the anions and cations, will move excuse me, under the influence of this force to opposite electrodes. The electric force acting on the ions can be regarded as a special case of generalized force. This general force becomes useful in the discussion of motion of ions, even neutral molecules, in greater detail. We are going to see that. It will also help in describing their diffusion through solution, even in the absence of electric field. If this migration or diffusion is taken further, it helps in treatment of things such as rates of chemical reactions. Now, before we go into this migration of ions, let's first discuss some important you know, points or parameters that we will encounter. One is resistance. Now, resistance is obstruction. In a way, we say obstruction to the flow or movement in any system. In terms of what we are saying now, we are talking about current. So, anything that obstructs the flow of current, anything that obstructs the flow of charge, Anything that affects the flow of any species, any parameter at all, becomes a resistance. Even when you are moving, probably along the road, and the breeze, the air current is blowing against your movement, you will see that the air current will also become a resistance. According to Ohm's law, the current in amperes flowing through the cell is proportional to the potential of voltage it volts across the cell. So current is proportional to voltage. And we can see the proportionality constant is removed. So we're saying that current is equal to 1 over R multiplied by V. So where 1 over R is the proportionality constant, we'll remove that proportionality here. So that's the proportionality constant. R is known as the resistance. Therefore, from this equation 3.1 here, that's from this equation here, resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. Therefore, the resistance R of a cell is equal to the voltage divided by the current in amperes. 
Now the unit of resistance is O because of uh, coming from Ohm's law. So we already know the unit of uh, resistance. The next thing we look at is conductance. Conductance, conducts. We are trying to achieve something. Electrolyte solutions conduct electric currents through them by movement of ions to the electrode. So when that electric field is applied, the ions will move. When they now move from one point to the other, they conduct electricity, they conduct charge. That is carrying a certain quantity of a parameter from one point to the other. So as they move towards the electrode, they conduct. Now the power of the electrolytes to conduct electric current is determined by conductivity or conductance. Conductance is defined as a current carried by ions, electrons, protons, and so on. Any charge species. So when we're talking about ions, protons, that is a conductance. For instance, if I move from one stage from position A, I take a walk to position B. Now I've done something. I've conducted or I've carried something from that point A to point B. So when electrons move or ions move from one point to the next point, they have conducted maybe current at this point we're talking about current. So that's why we say conductance. And conductance is the reciprocal of resistance. So conductance is repre represented as L. It is equal to 1 over R, where R is the resistance. Therefore, the unit of conductance, remember we say the unit of uh, resistance is ohm. So the unit of conductance will be per ohm. That is 1 over ohm. And this is what we call cements, represented by S. So 1S, 1 cement is equal to 1 per ohm. Therefore, the lower the resistance of a solution, the greater its conductance. That's what I said, like, if you are moving along the road and the air current is so intense, it will disturb your movement. It will slow down your movement. You will be trying to struggle. It's just like somebody who is swimming and you are swimming against the water current. If water is flowing backwards and you are uh, swimming upwards, you have to apply a very serious force. In fact, sometimes many people can't do that. Because water current, you know, becomes a resistance to your swimming. So your swimming is now the conductance, and the water current becomes a resistance. So as the water current is increasing, your conductance, which is the swimming, decreases. But if the water current, assuming the water is calm, there is no resistance, then your swimming, which is the conductance in this case, increases. we can talk about conductivity. So we now look at the dimensions of this as a cell. Cross-sectional area A in meter square distance between the electrodes is L in meters. Now it means that the conductance of the cell L is proportional to the area and inversely proportional to the distance. Look at it here. This is the area. This is the distance. And the proportionality constant is K. Now, this is not actually K. We usually call it kappa. It's a kind of K with a, an elongated leg. It's a Greek word, kappa. And that is the proportionality constant. This is known as electrolytic conductivity or specific conductivity. Therefore, that kappa is equal to the conductance multiplied by distance between the electrode divided by the area the area of the our conductance cell and that gives us the unit per ohm per meter so specific conductivity means the conductance of one meter cell now the ratio l over a is known as the cell constant so you can be told to calculate the cell constant of any system therefore specific conductivity kappa can also be measured remember per ohm is the same as cements. So we can say measured in cements per meter. Sometimes in cements per cm. The reciprocal of specific resistance is termed specific conductance or specific conductivity. And it is defined as a conductance of one centimeter 
cube of the solution, which is this. Now see the kappa is equal to, look at our L here, L, small L over area is what we call the cell constant, which is this, which is equal to the cell constant over R because our conductance is 1 over R, that is inverse of resistance. Now, once we are talking about electrolytes, we want to distinguish between strong and weak electrolytes. Of course, we are still going to meet the strong and weak electrolytes later. Strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes. Strong electrolyte, the strong electrolyte is a substance that gives a solution in which almost all the ions are ionized. The solution itself is called strong electrolytic solution. So the solutions are good conductors of electricity and have high value of equivalent conductance, even at low concentrations. We can see the examples of strong electrolytes. For instance, for strong acids, HCl, HCl will ionize to give hydrogen ion and Cl minus. So everything is ionized. The same happens with H2SO4 and so on. Strong base is the same thing, sodium OH minus, potassium OH minus, like that. Now salt, the same sodium chloride, will ionize as sodium plus and Cl minus. So we are saying that they will ionize and give all the ions, as all the ions are given out in solution. On the other hand, weak electrolytes. A weak electrolyte is a substance that gives a solution in which only small proportion of the solid molecules are ionized. So it's not completely ionized. Every weak electrolyte is not completely ionized. And we say such a solution is called a weak electrolytic solution. Look at the examples. We also have acids, acetic acid, oxalic acid. Now when you look at acetic acid, acetic acid will ionize and give a small proportion of the hydrogen. There is still hydrogen in the acetate ion and that's why it's all completely ionized. Weak base is the same thing and then salts, you know, mercury 2 chloride, lead 2 acetate, they are all weak electrolytes. So we're able to look at resistance, these are the things we need, conductance, conductivity, and of course, definition of strong and weak electrolytes and the examples. So I hope to see you in the next model. Thank you very much.